You know, a lot of deserving players are not in the National Baseball Hall of Fame in the States. Fred McGriff and Scott Rowland got in on the weekend. But this guy's on the top of everybody's list. I saw this guy pitch over a number of years. We emulated him. We celebrated him. And uh, a lot of us became Pittsburgh Pirates fans because of him, him and Dave Parker. Kent DeColvey. Can you imagine Kent DeColvey's not in the in the Major League Baseball or the Baseball Hall of Fame? Now, Kelton Charles DeColvey, nicknamed Teak, is an American pro, former pro baseball right-handed relief pitcher, a submariner who played 16 seasons of Major League Baseball, primarily for the Pirates. He also played for the Phillies and Reds, pitching with unusual submarine deliver, delivery, uh, like Mark Eichhorn and uh, other players. He was known as a workhorse relief pitcher, holds several records for a number of games pitched and innings pitched. DeColvey is a 1969 graduate of Marietta College, in Marietta, Ohio. The native of Cincinnati signed at years a free agent with the Pirates and remained with them until 85. He made his major league debut against the Montreal Expos on May 20, 74. He pitched an inning of relief and allowed one hit in the fall 4-2 loss. His best seasons came in 78 and 79, in both of which he saved 31 games and posted ERAs of 233 and 275, respectively. He won the NL Pitcher of the Month for August of the 78 and saved three games in the 79 <coughs> World Series in that one where Pittsburgh came back from 3-1 down. He saved a winner as the Pirates defeated the Orioles 4-3. He was an All-Star in 1980. He was eventually traded in five by the Pirates and the Phillies for fellow reliever Al Holland and minor league left-handed pitcher Frankie Griffin on April 28, 85. He continued to be an effective reliever into his 40s. Only in his first season and his last season did he post an ERA over four, last season being 1989. While with the Phillies, he led the NL in games pitched for the fourth time with 90 and 87 at the age of 40. DeColvey signed with the Cincinnati Reds before the 89 season, his hometown squad, and pitched in 37 games before retiring in July. Now, he led the National League in games pitched four times, appearing in 90 more games three times. He and Mike Marshall are the only pitchers in baseball history to appear in 90 or more games more than once, having each done defeat three times. He's also the oldest pitcher ever to appear in 90 games, which he did so in 87 at the age of 40. His three saves in the 79 World Series tied the single series mark set by Elroy Face in a 1960 World Series, but was broken by John Wettlin in 1996. He holds the NL record for career innings pitch and relief, 1436 and two thirds, and formerly held the major league record for career relief appearances. His 1,050 career games on relief ranked second in major league history to Hoyt Williams, 1070 when he retired. He owns the, the career records for most appearances in innings pitch without making a single start. At 86, he, bo- he, bo- he broke Roy Face's NHL, NL record of 846 career games pitch. He held a record until John Franco passed him in 2004. In August of 87, he pitched on nine consecutive days, a, a record for pitchers. His submarine delivery would save his pitching. Career strikeout, 779, 184 saves, 94-90 record, 2.85 uh, ERA. Now, what made him really popular with everybody that was National League fans, just because he was a very gaunt uh, pitcher, very, very thin and inspiring to a lot of people. You didn't have to look like a perfect baseball player to be a good baseball player. Now, he unfortunately uh, holds the career record for most career losses while well, having given any of your own runs with 12, as well as the record for most intentional walks issued with 179. Now, uh, he's been everywhere since uh, in his career. He appeared in the episode of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood in 83 to explain how people play baseball. He was also a member of the Phillies broadcast team from 91 to 97. Now, after several years of involvement with the Washington Wild Things of the Independent Frontier League, he took a job as a Pittsburgh Pirates event scout in 2006. Now, he worked uh, for Sportsnet Pittsburgh and is an analyst from 2008 to 2017 for each Pittsburgh game. However, in the early to mid part of the 2014 season, he took hiatus for personal reasons. Now, Tagulvi underwent a successful heart transplantation tra- transplant surgery on September 5th, 2014, after spending eight months on a transplant list. The surgery was formed at Allegheny General Hospital. Now, rumors went around the time that he was already dead. There was a CBC report that he died. And dad said, you better check this. I don't think he's dead. And my dad was right. So that's how much he was popular in Canada. I think he was much more popular in Canada than he was in the States. Now, to Culvey, throughout the ceremony first pitch, 
at the NL uh, wildcard game between the Pirates and is it the Giants on October 1st, 2014, just a few weeks after his surgery. He eventually announced his retirement from broadcasting on September 6, 2017. Now, the great relievers in Major League Baseball history, he's part of that. He had a great time with Pittsburgh. All those Pittsburgh had, he, he knew how to hit a, hit a strike zone. But he, when, he, when he would come in, like I said, it was it was weird. Because, you know, when you go to the circus, you see the thin man, eh? Like, he, I don't think in, uh, at the height of his career, uh, he weighed, like, he got bigger when he got older, but he was, uh, you know, I think the height and weight that he gave him was, uh, 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 let me check this right now, because I should have done that. To Colby, again, looked like he needed a, size, uh, a sandwich. Now, what was kind of interesting, we saw to Colby the most uh, from the Expos. Again, sorry about that. 6'4", 180. He wasn't a 180. He was, he was a thin 6'4", 180. But again, that submarine approach. It, when a ball would come in, it was like a ball falling off the cusp of a table. Now, uh, Dave Van Horn and the other Canadian announcers one said, can you imagine if the Colby was playing for the Montreal Expos. It's kind of ironic because the Phillies and Pirates were big rivals, and he ended, he ended up being with the, the Phillies. But that fit in a little bit because Tug McGraw uh, was pretty well, you know, past his prime. He needed somebody. And the Phillies were pretty well faded out by the uh, early 1980s because all that uh, Luzinski was gone, some of the key players were gone. But Kent DeColvey, uh it was – I remember this. I got seven consecutive – Daily papers in New Brunswick looking for the, the box score for Pittsburgh. And win or lose, the Colby would pitch. He, he would either finish off the game, get the save, or come into the eighth inning of a blowout. Or he had to pitch every day to make that, that submarine ball go, like, you know, the, the twisted. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here with our Pittsburgh Pirates Vintage Podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And I know a lot of people out there were wondering, Fred McGriff and Roland getting in, you know, and you always say, how come T- Kent Colby's not in? How come certain players are uh, Joe Carter as well? Like, it makes no sense. There's no heads or tails to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. You should have a Major League Baseball Hall of Fame to assure that we get in. Thanks for listening. Bye.